You welcome back. The River State House of Assembly crisis escalates with shocking claims and counterclaims surrounding an alleged assassination attempt on Edison Hill, who maintains he is in position as Speaker of the House of Assembly amid a factional dispute. He reported a dramatic invasion of his residence by armed men dressed in police uniform, purportedly intending to assassinate him and his family. However, the State Police Commissioner Tunji Disu, who recently assumed uh, duties, uh, contradicts this narrative labeling the incident as part of a routine police patrol. With a conflicting accounts emerging, the situation raises grave concerns about security, about political maneuvering, and the rule of law within the state's legislative sphere. And tonight on Politics HQ, we want to dissect uh, these conflicting narratives and their potential ramifications on River State's uh, political uh, landscape. Our guest uh, tonight is um, a Rivers Man, a core Rivers Man, of course, is a former special advisor to the governor of River State on uh, information on media and publicity. He is a human rights advocate. Uh, Oponabo in Kotaria, very good evening to you and thank you very much for your time. Good evening, my brother Kofi, and good evening, Nigerians. Yes, indeed. Uh, we trust the Potakot as well. Well, I missed the, the conflicting reports. The River State Police Command is describing the intrusion into Edison Ahia's residence as part of their routine patrol. Uh, what's your, th your thought on this as compared to uh, Ahia's claim that there was an assassination attempt uh, on him and his family? Well, uh, first and foremost, Kofi, before I answer that question, I watched your program, the program preceding this one, and I, I chuckled because uh, it, is, it is shocking to hear that somebody is saying it is difficult to approach Supreme Court justices. Where to step further to say, even when a relative wants to visit a Supreme Court justice, that he has to go through some hurdles, protocol hurdles. Is, is, is the height of insincerity. You could see he was struggling to struggle the issue. You can meet a Supreme Court justice anytime you want to, provided you have a relationship with him or there is something you want to do with him. So I am really surprised, and uh, that goes to show you tried to contradict him when you said, uh, made mention of what uh, the Court of Appeal Justice, the President of the Court of Appeal Justice said. That she was under pressure. If she was under pressure from the moon, air, sun, sky, it's highly ridiculous for anybody to come and defend such. Very ridiculous. Even what Booker Shaw said, he said, Come and prove. The man is saying, I told my wife, he said, What other evidence do you want? It is very ridiculous. I mean, we should stop dispensing mendacity to the public, especially when we are on national television. Having said that, let's go back to the River State story. Uh, on the veracity and apocryphalness of uh, Eddie's uh, claim that there was an assassination attempt on his, not just him, on his, him and members of his family, one cannot really ascertain the, the truth. Why I say one cannot really ascertain is because I wasn't there. I have not gone to visit. But the preponderance of opinion is that it was a counterattack. Why I tend to believe that is the defense by the State Commission of Police, who said it was a routine check. That is the most insane thing to say, very sorry to say, because it is insulting the sensibilities of Nigerians. A routine check, can you go to open fire? A routine check, can you visit the, pres the residence of somebody? The routine check, you drive past. That's what you do. But you go to open fire at the residence of somebody. It's not. It's no longer a routine check. It's targeted at that person. And why I say it's probably a counterattack is because don't forget Martin Samuel. I don't know whether to call him a speaker or a functional speaker because it is a governor of a state that recognizes and knows who the speaker is. And the governor of the state, Sim Fubara, described um, Eddie Edison as a speaker and even congratulated him on the day he said he was a speaker. He congratulated him on national tele and so on. 
you know, and there was even school bans concerning that. And the governor has not come out to say no. So you find out that on the issue of the attack, I tend to believe, I'm inclined to believe that there was an attack. But because I've not visited the place, I don't want to say categorically that there was an attack. But because of what the CP has said, he said it was a routine check. And how do you reconcile this? It's somewhere from echoes of reason and poverty of logic that you have a routine check and you attack the premise of somebody and the person's men try to repel your, your, the attackers. Is that routine check? So the CP inadvertently indicted the police. It might not be an assassination attack. It might be an arrest. It might be anything. But when there's fluidity, when the situation is fluid, then all kinds of interpretations could be woven into it. And that's why most people say it's assassination attack. Some say it is this, and some say it is that. And from the CP statement, I want to believe that actually there was an attack on the residents. I want to believe. That's why I said believe right. that okay. there was an attack on the residents of ADNC. Okay. Uh, uh, are you aware of um, police routine patrols, you know, what this concept of routine patrol is um, that goes into people's houses, even houses of uh, VIPs, uh, with a sort of reported altercation with the personal security of, um, the, uh, 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 of the VIPs? We don't even have an account of what happened whether they spoke to him, they searched his house, they talked to him, they asked him, are you okay? Okay. Or who they were. So I'm saying, okay, so yeah, so, yeah. The, the question is, is it, is it, is it normal? That's the question. Well, are you asked. aware of what a routine, such routine patrol? Have you seen it before? You know, we don't even have enough I'm police a child in the of that. So. I'm a child of that. Uh, my father, Justin Patel, was the very first black judge of Old River State. And by God's grace, we lived in Old Jerry precisely 15 Abana Street. So, as I that, if I did respect the judges get these days, not even Supreme Court justices get them. As at that time, you had the police van patrolling the whole of Abana Street and OGRA. And the whole essence was to ensure residents were safe. It was a very normal thing. And if they sense any trouble, they stop at the gate and ask questions. They don't barrel into your gate. They ask questions. Even when we were going to school, all those who attended prior my school with me at that time, even when we were going to school, there were policemen stationed there to ensure that the children of the judges were quite safe. Because if they go back home and complain, the policemen will be asked questions. What happened? Okay. And so, 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 are you, you're saying, open up, we are saying that this routine. Yeah, this routine patrol is um, uh, known to is a known thing that the police do. It's a, a I standard told you, practice. I just explained to you. I said it's normal, but okay. you don't barge into somebody's case. Okay, so uh, in, in that case, in that case, the if men you... are the case, one minute, one minute. Please. Okay, okay, the okay, men okay are we'll the go. Were equally policemen mm -hmm. were guarded by policemen. Okay, two in the morning and three at night. That was the routine. Then it was only my father. Then later, just uh, um, uh, uh, this British man, Michael Holding, came in. He eventually became the chief judge. Then shortly after, we had Justice uh, uh, Graham Douglas. So, and they had a van. Then a Land Rover that was taking us to school with a policeman in front. Because if you can't attack the judge, you're going to attack the family members. So we were well protected. That's why I say even Supreme Court justices don't enjoy what high court judges enjoyed in those days. Okay. So ju just by, to, to by way of inquiry, uh, because you're sharing your personal experience with us, um, were there policemen stationed just like it was with your uh, your your father of pleasant memory? Okay. The... I think you are not listening to me. I told you we had two policemen. No, 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 no. I, I'm not talking about I'm you fine. now, Puna, but I'm talking about Edison's. Uh, uh, premises. Um, do you suspect? Uh, being a speaker, being a speaker, tell me, councillors don't they have policemen? Okay. So, so is, is it a normal that if a policeman? You have money in Nigeria, you have a policeman. 
Okay. And being a speaker, definitely he's going to have, you should have some police, police security guards at his premises, definitely. Mm. Okay. So is it, is it, is it, does it, um, is it, does it, is it normal that maybe even when you have three policemen guarding the house, that the police team on routine patrol will say we want to enter to see what's happening here? As I said, in my opening statement, I captured all this and explained all this. Things. I told you whether policemen or no policemen, you ask, you inquire from the security guard if you sense any trouble, if there is any problem. If the man tells you no problem, you walk away. It's as simple as that. If he tells you there's a problem, then you invite him in. That's, it's as simple as that. You don't barrel. I use the word barrel. You don't barrel into somebody's house. Building like that. That is trespass because you don't have what you call a warrant. So you no. don't do that. All right. The, the House of Assembly sat. The uh, privacy of somebody. Yes, yes. But the House and, of Assembly and, sat and this and morning. Edison did not invite the police. Yeah. He never complained of anything. Oh, but so Be because of time, I just want to quickly ask course. you uh, move on to the, the House of Assembly that sat this morning. Some reports say at 6 a.m., but what we saw was that they had a good number of um, House of Assembly members in attendance. Um, as we speak, who, in your opinion, is the Speaker of the River State House of Assembly? House of Assembly in attendance. Are you also aware that the, the members were escorted to the Assembly complex by policemen who disappeared immediately because they didn't tell you that one? Why, why, would, they, why would they escort them? It wasn't even, it was an escort. You know, you know the meaning of an escort. Escort means protection. So why were they escorted into the assembly complex? That is number one. What did they go to do there? This should give you an idea, an inkling. The assembly members, all of a sudden, woke up from their slumber and said they want financial autonomy. In the last eight years, where the financial autonomy was mooted nationally, nationwide, why did they reject it? So that they will have the financial autonomy in order to divest the government of some powers and to have the right to do whatever they want to do because Sim is now the governor of Rivers. But isn't, isn't that a positive, a positive for democracy in Rivers State if we have an independent House but of Assembly? When it, it, it is positive, get my point. I have always been a strong advocate of local government autonomy, House to Assembly autonomy, because the members of the House, I, I called the that's a state house of assembly. Right now, even though they are Fabio, the National Assembly, I call them ministries of lawmaking under the executive arm. Because they just do what the government wants them to do. When you hear most of the bills passed, they're so ridiculous, outrageous, and offensive, very provocative. But that is what the government wants. All right. They can All never right. turn down a commissioner. In part okay. state, it was tried, and what happened to the speaker? Okay, open up, but we have to go. Yeah, we have to go. Yeah, we have to go. But just, just a quick one. Cut me short. You yeah. affect my flow. In, a a it, quick one, Oponabo, because of time, we have to go. Please permit me to ask you this quick question. Um, we've seen here some weekends, Sim Fubra, the current governor and the former governor in public recent times. The last one was at uh, the uh, uh, opening of um, one of the, the malls in Port Harcourt, and then before that, it was at the Anglican church where he said, you're my boss, my ogre. Um, I, we thought these two of them were on the path of mending their relationship and sorting this out. It all depends on sincerity. Uh, it was this with Monfort or somebody who said you cannot uh, the mind the mind construction on the face of something. That's the way they put it. So it all boils down to sincerity. But I believe that what we have is managed conflict and not resolved conflict. I see. I we see. have managed conflict because I I don't see VK VK admitting agreeing to uh, reconciliation accommodation been the vindictive person that we all know. All right. He feels his ego has been bruised by Sim Fubara, whom he prays to high heavens will never okay. challenge him. Okay, but well, we have to go. We, we, we've shot oh, over a short oh, time. Oh, so oh, I want so to thank short. you. I don't, like, I don't like being caught when, I, when I'm Yes, flowing. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I because of time. Then, so let me have enough time next time. Please. Yes, we definitely will. Thank you so much, uh, Oponaibo Ngotari. It's always a pleasure having you. And you've given us a deep insight into where things stand in Riverside as we speak. Thank you very much for your time. And that's the size of our package uh, tonight on Politics HQ. Uh, you've been a wonderful company. We appreciate your time. We're back tomorrow.
Same time, I'm Kofi Bartels. Good night.